In this video, we're going to take a look at the classification of matter. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to classify a substance using the following terms. Pure substances, elements, compounds, mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures, or solutions. Let's start off then by defining what chemistry really is. It's the study of matter and matter's properties and its changes or transformations. And matter is defined as anything that has volume and has a mass. So that's pretty much everything around us, like liquids, solids, gases, and so on and so forth. So matter itself can be broken down into two categories. The first category is uh, pure substances, these are substances in which all the particles that make up the substance are the same. So for example, uh, hydrogen gas is a, is a good example of a pure substance. Um, salt or NaCl, sodium chloride, is also an example, as well as glucose, which we know also as sugar, is also an example of a pure substance. The other category is mixtures. And these are substances in which some of the particles that make up the substance are different. So these are made up of two or more things. An example might be soapy water. And soapy water is made up of water and soap. That gives you all the bubbles. You could also have, say, a mixture of salt and pepper. And that would be considered a mixture of both salt and pepper. So let's look at breaking down these two categories a little bit more. We'll start with pure substances. Pure substances can be classified again in two ways, as either elements or as compounds. Starting with elements, elements are made up of one type of atom. So they can't be broken down any further. And your clue to know that something's an element is, can it be found on the periodic table? If yes, it's an element. If no, then it's probably a compound. So an example, if we go back to our hydrogen gas, our sodium chloride, or our glucose, hydrogen gas is a good example because that is an element Hydrogen is an element that is found on the periodic table. Now compounds can be made up of, they're made up of one type of molecule, but they can be broken down further. So they're made up of at, le uh, at least two or more types of atoms. So examples here might be our table salt or our sodium chloride, which is made up of sodium atoms and chlorine atoms, or glucose, sugar, we know has the formula C6H12O6, and so it's made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. So this would be an example of a compound. Now looking at the other side of our classification, going back to mixtures, mixtures can also be classified in two ways. The first way is solutions. These are also called homogeneous mixtures. And the other way is heterogeneous mixtures. Let's start with solutions then, or homogeneous mixtures. The reason we use the word homogeneous, homo means one, and so they look the same everywhere, or they have one visible phase. So if we go back to our examples, soapy water is actually a pretty good example here because even though we've got the soap dissolved in the water and we do have bubbles, if you looked at the water itself with the soap dissolved in there, it would look like all one visible phase. Other good examples here are acids. Acids are actually always diluted in water, so they're a mixture of the acid and water. Uh, same goes with bases. So they're always a mixture of the base and water, but both of these always appear like they have one visible phase. Now, going over to the other side, hetero 
means more than one. So heterogeneous mixtures are going to look different at different locations, or they have two or more visible phases. So this is where you can distinctly see the differences between the different phases. If we go back to our example, salt and pepper is a really good example because you would see the white bits of salt and the black bits of pepper, and they're not mixing together to make one phase. So this would be a heterogeneous mixture. Some other great examples here, granite, if you have, for example, a granite countertop in your kitchen, you can see all the different flecks of different minerals and rocks that are within the granite itself. Oil and vinegar is another good example because when you put those two together, they don't mix, okay, so they create two or more visible um, phases. And finally, I think everyone's favorite example of a heterogeneous mixture is pizza. Okay, you got all the different toppings. They don't mix together to make one visible phase. So this is a heterogeneous mixture. Now, if you're trying to classify matter, this flowchart actually really helps here. So you start with your matter and you ask, does it have constant properties and composition? If yes, it's a pure substance. And then you ask yourself, can it be simplified chemically? So if no, if it's made of just one thing, it's an element. If yes, it's a compound. Going on the other side of our flow chart then, if it doesn't have constant properties or composition, it's a mixture. And then you can ask yourself, is it uniform throughout? If yes, it's homogeneous or a solution. And if no, it would be a heterogeneous mixture. So that's it for this video. Let's move on to our next task.